Hey you guys, welcome back. We're going to review a bunch of stuff today. Um, basically the head form and then I've got a mannequin here. We're going to be doing a, a real quick uh, uniform layer once we've reviewed the head form itself. But I wanted to show you something. You guys um, saw my Tammy mannequin. You can see I did go back in and add a little bit more 6A on the one side. I felt like it was still just a little bit warm. But um, anyways, one thing that I want you to notice about this Tammy mannequin, see that, I mean, how they kind of really open that up right there so that, um, you know, when you're working with it, it's got its own qu four quadrant type of section on it. So you can see it. What do you need, cameraman? Is this one on? Yeah, it's on. It's up there. This one? Yeah, they're all on. Okay. Okay, moving forward. All right, so anyways, um, so I wanted you to see that, and what I'm doing is I'm going to make it really, really difficult for myself. These are things in the future. You, I already kind of went through all of the, the Tammy and you know step by step and yeah it got to be a little drawn out as far as okay now you do this now you do that uh, it's it's like so amazing to look at that especially when I put it upside down to see uh, I mean I still see a little bit of tone this is where I really admire my students I gotta tell you uh, that they got it so perfect and here I am the teacher and I'm still kind maybe I'm looking too deep you know what I mean so, but it's still, it looks pretty good. But what I'm going to do this time, and you guys that are in school, you've got your mannequins. If your schools don't have the Tammy mannequin that's got all the different colors, make your own. I mean, that's why you're in school for, right? And understanding the concept of color. Uh, talking about color, I'm working on my, um, Dictionary. I'm revising it right now. It'll probably go into publication. I'm hoping before summer uh, and, and it goes deep into the resistance level what you've got as far as resistance with a client How do you know put the colors and what happens with when you mix colors in your brain? It's nice to look at a, a color chart when you need it but know the result of those choices I mean because it's tone of color just as with the Tammy but uh, that, that you need to get. But what I want to show you is um, I did my own Tammy and I kind of, I put it into four quadrants and then I just kind of tapped it, but I kind of went crazy right there, a little bit too wide, uh, a little bit too wide there, but it doesn't matter. What I want to explain to you on this, put this comb right here, hold that comb for me. Um, this is going to be white when I'm finished with it. You can already see that it's already blonde right there but I want to repeat the Tammy on my own. I'm going to make it even more difficult on myself. So this is going to be white. This is going to be simple. It will be black. This is going to be like a real coppery, copper gold, uh, not brown, but copper gold, kind of a, a, a little darker than blonde. And then this is going to be a real pastel blonde. This right here is going to be about this color here. So when I have this finished, I'm not going to uh, do a video on it, but I want to show it to you for those of you that, that watch my videos, because I will be covering what I did to it to get it. This time I'm going to make it more difficult on myself. I'm going to make it all blonde. Uh, I'm going to take this to white, and then I'm going to take it back and uh, take it to a level 8 color. Remember, this was about a level 5, 6 color. Yeah, more like a level five and that was that was um, a challenge enough going into the lighter colors like I said the darker colors anything darker than the the Tammy is going to be really really difficult I mean uh, really really simple anything lighter is going to be difficult the problem that I saw because uh, I went to pick up some color yesterday because with Tammy I just used what I had and I thought, you know, I better go pick up some color, see what I need, because I didn't have any black at level one color. Good God, color's gotten expensive lately. So what I did was, uh, so you guys that are in school, hey, school's got it there. If they let you use it, use it. But um, what I did was I bought the stuff on sale. I mean, I'm just going to use it on a mannequin. I'm not going to worry about it. So I wanted to cover that with you. 
But what we're going to do today, I want to cover the head form. If you don't know where you're at on the head form, you know, I can't say it enough. How do you know where you're going? It's real easy to say, part it into four quadrants and start cutting. It's real easy to say, just hold it like this and cut it there. It's not enough information. You've got to get to where you're speaking the same language. So, and, and believe me, the head form, I've got it broken down into 15 different sections. It's right here. Okay, they're all numbered. Um, let me move this out of the way. Okay, you three, you gotta get over there. Uh, you remember how I showed you how to do a head form. See, there's the head form right there. See it, that's a question mark. This is a number one, this is a number two. It's the same thing. Question mark, number one, number two. The parietal line, the exact area for the parietal line, if you put your hand straight here and here, see this point, it fits right there. That's your parietal line, that's the curve of the head. Some places call it the crest, however, if I tell you to take it up to the crest and you don't know where that lower ridge is at, we're not speaking the same language. That's when error, room for error happens. Now, let me go over each one. Okay, so we've got the apex, frontal fringe or bang, right here. And it's a pie shape. You never cut a bang rectangular because what ends up happening, you end up with those little pieces that are always gonna drive you nuts. Always pie shape it. Number three is the parietal line right here. That what they call the crest, but it's a, the center of the crest is the parietal line. Number four, the upper ridge. The way you find the upper ridge is you take your comb and where the comb leaves the head, it's going to touch where that apex line is at and it happens all the way around the head form. All right, so that is your upper ridge. All the way around the crown and even the frontal fringe if you want, but that's the upper ridge. The lower ridge, number five, is where the comb leaves the head, and I'm gonna show you, it's right there. There's the arrow off the side of the head. Or what is recognized, and you'll see it later, the flat part, we recognize it as a temporal. But let me ask you a question, is it flat? Yes, it's flat. That's where we have the least amount of hair. Number six is the crown. And you've got the crown. If you have a mannequin that you've cut pretty short, just shave it. Shave it so you know where you're at because this is easy to find it. Take one of these. This is not. I mean, I can tell you where they're all at because I know. But do you know? So it's important that once we've got the hair that covers it, for you to have a good idea. All right, uh, number seven is the vertex. The vertex is this point. You've got your parietal line. There is an area here where the comb leaves the head. If you know exactly where the vertex is at, that's the exact location that you're gonna bring straight down to wrap that center back area for your perm. Now there's another connection to that, by the way. So the vertex is that center area just above the parietal line where you're gonna place that first perm rod and bring it straight down. Once you develop an eye for it and know exactly where you're at, you're not guessing. You're no longer wondering, okay, am I in the right spot? Okay, number eight, the vertical crest. The vertical crest is right here. The reason we call it the vertical crest just as this crest is rounded, this area here is flat, and then what it rounds out into the occipital. This is a vertical crest. The thing about the vertical crest, and we're gonna talk about it a little bit when I do the zero uh, for the uniform layer. So the vertical crest is when you have one side longer than the other and you're looking up front because you notice, you know, you bring the hair forward and one side's longer. What do we normally do? We normally start cutting in the front, do not. Pick it up at the vertical crest, go down, look for a corner. There will be a corner or a rounded spot. Follow that to cut. Once you blend it with the center nape, 
Follow that to come back around to the front and you're gonna be amazed. Just try it, all I'm saying is try it because you're gonna find that then it will be even. The area that you missed is not up here, it's back here and that's normal. That is the, the theory behind that is going right to left and I've shown you this before. You can see it, it's going to happen. Nine out of tens, nine out of 10 times it'll be on that side if you're right-handed, this side if you're left-handed. So look at the law of nature that it happens with. Now, if it's on this side, then you started here and went, see, I mean, it's the same principle, same principle. So the thing about getting it straight, get that elbow up. Then it stays straight. That's the variable. That's what's causing that. So know these things. All right. So, um, Number nine is the flat part of the head, and we recognize that as the temporal area, but bottom line, it's flat. It is flat, it is flat, all right? Uh, the occipital, that's where we have the most amount of hair is in the occipital area. Um, you know what I did, I get the, the vertex, I meant to tell you on the vertex up here, number seven, that's where the calyx are. That's where you're gonna have some problems. So understand that, that that's normally where that little whirl is, right at where the vertex is at, slightly above the parietal line, by the way, if you didn't know that. Okay, so the occipital. Then we have the nape. Within the nape is an area that we call behind the ear, and that's right after that, number, number 12. Can you cover all of those? Number 10, flat part of the head, number 10, occipital, 11, the nape. How do you find the nape? Look, I don't even have to mark it. It always, put your finger there, it follows the same line. I'm not doing anything, it's just following the same line. I'm not measuring it, nothing, doing the same thing. Do it for yourself, don't direct it. Just let it travel around your head, get your elbow up, let it travel around your head, and you should end up at your knowledge bone because that's the natural fall that is going to happen. The thing about the nape line and the area behind the ear this area behind the ear, cowlicks, especially if you're doing fades or you know real short haircuts, one side may grow up, one side may grow down. The cowlicks determine a lot right there. So that's where, and a lot of times if you're gonna do a zero elevation haircut, if one grows up, one grows down, we've discussed this before, when they do it themselves, they're gonna think the cut's crooked and it won't be. So be aware of that. And the thing about uh, the nape line as well, that's the beginning of your fade. That's when you start fading. Somebody wants a low fade, that's where you're gonna start it. The best part there, you're not gonna be guessing. You're gonna know where you're at. And the more you understand, it's not just small areas. It's not just you know the top of the head, the occipital, the, the, the temporal. It is 15 different parts, but if you know where you're at, your concept of learning, and getting more information is going to become even better. So the tragus. Okay, how many of you cut really short hair and then you're going from one side to the other trying to see if those sideburns are correct? Well, that little nodule right here, that little nodule on your ear right there, that little nodule that you feel, that's the tragus. That's a point of measure for sideburns. And the entire part of the ear is actually a point of measure for sideburns. So look at that ear determine where that sideburn is at, and then take it over to the other side to the same spot. And you're not having to look back and forth to see if they're even, because they will be even. I mean, unless the person is really distorted, you know, but not likely, okay? So um, that's um, the tragus. The interior is everything inside, and I know some books uh, indicate that the interior is underneath the the, occip the parietal line, and this is the exterior. The interior is inside your perimeter line. In other words, your fence, your hairline, that's the perimeter, that is the outside. That's the reality of it all. Are they wrong? No, that's just how they've chosen to teach. So don't be confused about it, but just know that. So there's 15 different parts to the head form. So the apex, top, highest part of the head. Um, frontal fringe, bangs, parietal line, upper ridge, lower ridge, the crown. And the crown, by the way, if you put your hand on your crown, you're gonna find that it's flat. On mannequins, it's a little round, but your own crown is kind of flat. 
Um, the vertex is inside that parietal line. That's a guide. Oh, I meant to tell you, I forgot. There we go. Just thinking about the vertex. If you know exactly where the vertex is at and you know where that area behind the ear is at, right here, and then you come up to the apex, the upper ridge, and then just kind of bring it on up to the front without even looking in the mirror, without going back and forth. That's why I'm able to do a perfect mohawk without looking in the mirror. I just know where I'm at and then I know where I'm going. So if I know that that's where the vertex is at, where those colics are, I know that I'm gonna go perfectly straight down into that area behind the ear and that is a mohawk, all right? That's also an area that a lot of times right in this area behind the ear, that's where a lot of guys wanted to come, their fades, come to a point. So it would be, the point would be right at the knowledge bone. So if you know where that's at, you can do it better, all right? So these are, again, it's just a repeat. The occipital area has the most amount of hair. The temporal or flat part has the least. The nape area, of course, the calyx, that's what you have to watch out for within the nape area, behind, that's the area behind the ear. The tragus is a point of measure, that's the ear itself. And then the interior is all of your hair. All those little dots are the interior. All those little hairs coming out, that's the inside. And then the perimeter line is your hairline. That's your wall, all right? And uh, so many times, um, you know, it, it creates less error. So if there's any questions on that, please give me a note. Uh, go on my, um, you know, join one of the videos that I do and just write a comment or write a note on it. Because the more you know about haircutting, the faster you're going to get at it, for one, and the less air, room for error. The last, the, you know, it's a lot less, uh, uh, lot less difficult for you. And I don't want to forget, I keep forgetting the book. I'll have this one and hopefully by fall I'll have my, I'll have two of them for you. But the, the dictionary is, is amazing with color. I mean, it goes deep, but you'll have a very good understanding. And um, the thing about it, it's, it's got an introduction to it in the back here um, for you, as far as the introduction to color. But the dictionary goes deep into it and explains everything in complete detail. But look at the book so far. I was really surprised. I just noticed it's gone worldwide. And uh, hey, I want to thank you guys that have purchased it. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sorry about uh, some of the errors. I, I, I won't go into it. But uh, my, the, my next book's going to be published somewhere else. But anyways, I uh, just want to let you guys know. Uh, make sure that you look at the book. So, all right. If, you, if there are no questions, I don't see anybody raising their hands, we're going to do, again, the uniform layer. So I'll be taking this off because uh, I don't want it to create confusion. So let me get, I've got my eraser right here. So I hope you guys got this. Now, like I said, this was just review. You know how to do a head form. You know, question mark, one, two, and then just mark it off. And if you have a mannequin that you've used up, just shave it off. You're not doing anything else with it and mark it for yourself. You know where it's at. All right, so I'm gonna take this off just to kind of clear the board a bit. And uh, so that it's not a deterrent when we're doing the haircut. I hope. It's still a little bit on there. But I think it's so much that it's gonna, that it's gonna bug you. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna be doing a uniform layer. Now, I know, I already know, uh, you've been told to put it into four quadrants. And you've been told to start cutting and start traveling around the head and just hold it straight out 90 degree from where it grows. Okay, how about doing this? How about let's do the zero first. We're gonna do the zero degree. You all know how to do the zero degree haircut. And I'm doing it dry because I want you to see how it's gonna fall. I'm not gonna wet this at all. And that's what I like about this mannequin. She's got a lot of volume. So I'm gonna take it. Now, remember when I told you about how to hold your shears? We have the primary, secondary, extended position. What is this? Palm out, palm down, palm in. Okay, primary, secondary, extended. 
And I did hear somebody say they didn't cut this much because uh, uh, it might cause carpal tunnel. I've been doing this for 56 years and so far, thank goodness, no carpal tunnel. And I've done a lot of extended and you're going to do a lot of extended, especially if you're doing face framing. The main thing is, is uh, you know, make sure that you're holding it with the balls of the fingers. If you're not sure about hair cutting, get in front of a mirror, go straight up, go straight down, go straight up with every position. All right, and then extend it. And remember what I said about bending over when you have a client with long hair and you're, they're standing up, what's gonna happen as soon as you bend? Bring that elbow in. See, I automatically just do it because what will happen when you bend down, it automatically goes a little bit crooked. So, or you know, just off to the side of it. So be careful about that. All right, cameraman, can you see this? All right. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna kinda get my back, and then I hope I get it straight because I'm teaching this, but I will be, if it isn't, I will fix it, all right? And uh, uh, again, it'll prove the fact about that corner. That corner is going to be right at right at the, the nape, right at that vertical crest. That's where you go, to that vertical crest. That's where you're going to find it. All right, so I'm going to bring it down, and I'm just going to... Oh, by the way, I've noticed that some people, when they cut, they curl it up, and then they cut the, the primary position. No. Bring it straight down. If you do this, what's going to happen is the hair will then... You'll notice that it curls out. And there's a geometry behind that. There's an architecture behind that. And that's because you're slightly cutting that hair into a slight curve, forcing it to do that. We don't want to cut it into that slight curve. We want it to be blunt, a nice blunt cut. So I'm going to bring it straight down. I'm just at the center nape right now. And I'm going to cut my guide, cut it straight across. See, I am turning it just a bit, just because I'm doing this, but normally I would be standing in front here and holding it in that form to, to get a nice, solid line. And I am turning it, just like I'm telling you not to. Okay, now I'm gonna, and see, this is gonna come straight down, just like a zero. It's not different. No, these are not my best shears for this type of hair. Keep traveling around. Travel around. Okay. And you notice that I took it down to the nape line. All right, so I'm going to bring this round. Got the zero. And if you know where you're at, you know where you're going. I'm traveling around it. I'm not bringing, I'm not going to take this, this temporal side and bring it back. I'm holding it straight down from where it grows. The main thing to remember is the head is rounded back here, and I find that people tend to bring it back instead of traveling around to that area behind the ear and bringing it straight down there. This is your vertical crest. That's your why, and that's why we have that vertical crest within the, within the diagrams. So let's see if we're straight. I need to tighten my shear a bit. All right. And let's see what we've done. Okay. Let's see if we're straight. Now we're a little longer on this side, aren't we? Okay, where am I going to find it? And see, I just said here I'm right handed and it should be on the other side. But, because then of course I'm trying to teach this, but I'm going to come over here to the crest. And I'm going to find that corner. There it is. And I'm going to show you how small that corner is. Turn this around and I want to show you. And see it's right there at, that, at the crest. See that tiny little corner? That's it. But watch how it grows as I cut it. Just an ever so tiny little corner. I'm going to put my fingers over it so you can see that slight corner. Sometimes it'll be a little more. Sometimes, you know, it'll be a little rounded. So I'm going to bring that straight down, standing directly in front of it. And just, now I have a guide. Now you can see that. It's not by a lot. All right. Bring it around. Hold it straight down. And strangely enough, it grows. 
becomes just a little bit longer. Now look at how much it grew. You see that? So it will. And like I said, I'm cutting this dry. Now what do you think? Did we do it? Yeah, there we are. It's even. So that's what I'm telling you. That, that that's where it's going to be. If I had to try cutting on this side and stood in front of her trying to look at it, okay, where are, what, you know, what have we done here? It, it, it wouldn't happen. So now I'm going to bring this down. Now I have a guide. Take that off. Just follow my guide. Simple cut. Do a simple zero. The reason you've got to make sure that it's even is because that's going to become your guide later on. Uh, for part of the haircut, part of the uniform layer. And I'm just following my guide now, so that makes it a lot simpler as I travel around the head form here. Just follow that guide. All right, now drop the rest of it. Do we have anything to cut? Part it down the center, get its natural fall in there. Very little, very little to cut. I want to make sure we're parted correctly down the center. The nose is your guide. Use the body. You can see the nose, so use the body. We're going up to the vertex. In other words, what the, what's at the vertex? The cowlex. So that's as far as you take it. So there's just a tiny bit, not a lot. So today's just kind of like a review covering um, pretty much everything we've had before. If there's anything that you want, uh, somebody did mention about the, I think it was Vidal Sassoon five point cut, and that's, we can do that. However, that cut that they don't show is actually styled into it. It doesn't just fall down into it, it is styled into it. But I can give you the gist of what that cut is like. Yeah, all right. Now what I'm gonna do, is the 180. That's the zero. I'm going to do the 180. So I want to bring her down just a bit. Uh, you don't have to adjust cameraman because I'm going to just be pulling the hair up. So now I'm going to just take a subsection uh, and I'm going to show you two things here. Uh, I'm going to cut it front to back on this side and side to side on the other. Well, this is. We're going to need a start stop. You only got two minutes. Two minutes, all right. So we might have to have a start stop is what he said. He'll let me know as soon as we get there, okay? What I like about the front to back, front to back, is that it forces it to cup under. And I'm traveling to the parietal line, do you see that? Traveling to the parietal line. And I'm going to pick up the nape or the flat part. Yep, there's a little bit that's going to be cut there. Not a lot. Okay. And just, uh, I'm taking horizontal partings at the back occipital. So this looks like it's side to side, but realistically, all these little hairs are all the same length. And what happens is it cups under and isn't going to flip out. Now the other side, I'm going to cut it side to side. See how smooth that is. Now what you're going to see is more movement. Now somebody wants it to cup under front to back. Also creates volume for fine hair. Okay, we're going to cut for a minute and I'll be right back. Ready? Okay. All right, so this time side to side to the parietal line. Do you see that? And now I will use a guide from the other side. But you're going to see more, or you're going to get the effect of more movement. You see even more lift. You can see that where this is nice and smooth and flat, you can already see that breaking up right there. I want 
this up very little. And see, all the lines are vertical. So what I meant by the other strength and numbers in the other cut, because you're picking up all these hairs and they're all falling down the same. Side to side, you've got all these individual hairs. Now when we do the back, we're gonna do the same thing. It's vertical subsections. And there's more movement. It just depends on what you want with the cut. But a lot of clients, what they want is not to have to do too much at home. So if you've got that for them, they're a lot happier. There you go. Now how do you know that you've got your 180, that it's even? Let's hope and pray. Yes, it is, okay. If this was wet, you could probably be able to tell better. Come on, Lindsay. I don't, I don't know what her name is. Oh, see that one spot? I missed one. But see how flat that is. And look at the side. It's flat. Okay? So what you see here is a slight angle, and that's because of the curve of the head. But I will get that little sucker. So, isn't it nice? There's room for error, right? But don't tell your client, however, to stand on their hands. Just make sure that you get it even. Okay, I'm going to hold that so I can get it off. Now, here's the other simple part to this. Now what you're going to do, if you have a bob haircut, in other words, a zero haircut, and they want slight layering, make sure that you subsection off about an inch or a half inch up above the ear along the flat part or the temporal area, just this, just this side of the crest. Because if you take this up and you cut it, you're going to end up with a mullet because there's hair lower than that, all right? What our guideline is going to be as far as point of measure is the top of the ear. Remember I told you that the, the ear is a point of measure? So this is as high as we're gonna go. We're gonna go ahead and take it off because we're doing a uniform layer. But if she wanted just a bob, I would not, I would section this off and take it off above that and just follow that line, all right? But I'm not going to, we're gonna go ahead and take that off and this is just going to be a long, uniform layer. Now, the parietal line is my guide. All right, do you see where that's going to take length off the side here? Because this is off the bottom to match the bottom at the back. But if we take it off, that's where it's going to be shorter. Can you see that? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and take it off. And remember what's my guide? The tip of the ear. And this time I am traveling around the head form, holding it at the parietal line. That's why I'm saying, know where you're at so you know where you're going. Take it off. There's my guide. And just travel around. And it's always front to back, front to back, not all the way around. So I'm traveling around. See, I know where I'm at. I know that I'm still at the, at the tip of the ear. So if you have to check, goodness sake, go ahead and check it. And I'm doing it vertically because we are doing, we are doing the uniform layer. Okay, there it is. Okay, and you can see that that's, again, can you see the movement in it? All right, so I'm gonna do this side now, front to back. And there's my guide. Take it straight down. And you'll see that it's a slight mullet now because that side is shorter. I didn't let it drop. And bring it back around. And this is just a real simple cut so much easier than picking it up and traveling and traveling and traveling and then what you're cutting forever 
you don't want to have to do that. So if you do these simple methods, these simple steps, you'll get it right every time. Okay, there it is. Now center back. Okay, now we have two corners. Two corners on this. If you remember this haircut, you know where the corners are. When hair travels, it gets what? Longer. Most especially when it's in the interior. So two spots that it's longer, two corners that we're definitely going to find. If you follow your parietal line, and we call it riding the parietal line, you're going to find now my subsections are pretty big, I know that. Look at that perfect corner there. Good grief. Just travel around the parietal line. Look at that corner. See that parietal line traveled up and it traveled down. There's another spot on the head that traveled up and traveled down. That other part traveled mostly down though, but still, it's there. Turn this around so you can see it. If you haven't done a uniform layer, in other words, that's the 90 degree cut. 90 degree. When you get around the when you get around the, the crown, you're going to find that that's going to travel up just a bit. Do you see that? And that's always been a little odd to me, but that's just the way it is because that's the most rounded supposedly part of the head form. So you just match it there. Now I'm going to come over on this side, and they're all vertical subsections now. And get that corner. Come on, sucker, comb it. There it is. Not as big as the other one, but it's there. And look at that corner. It's a perfect corner. That's what you're taking off. So much easier, but you've got to know where your parietal line is at. And right now, basically, I guess you could call it the crest because isn't that what that is, kind of like the crest? You're holding it there. And let's uh, pull this up. And again, see where we're at the crown, how it's kind of changed a bit. Kind of weird. Okay, the other spot that we were, let me, I just want to do something here. This is the center crown. Is there a corner there? And OMG, look at that, yes center crown. All right, now one more corner is at the nape. This hair traveled down and it traveled out because of that going up above the ear and coming around, all right? We didn't pick that up. We stayed on it, but there will be a variable right there. And we take that off to blend. Your guide is the perimeter line and that center occipital area. And at the very center nape, you will see a corner. It's always strange to me. That's part of the geometry of hair cutting. Okay, and can you see it? I'm gonna hold it out before I put my hands on it. Okay. Turn it. See that guide and this guide. And we're just holding it straight. We're following the head form. When we hold it, we're following the head form. When I was at the parietal line, we were doing it at a slight angle. That's where that corner helped us out. And you'll notice your fingers. They're slightly diagonal, in other words. At the nape, the same thing. Do you notice the fingers? The fingers are slightly diagonal. Now the variable here is also going to be along the front because we took them both and we brought them out. So we should have a corner right at that center front, right at the nose area, and it's not much of a corner, but it is slightly rounded. I wanna make sure that you can see that. See what I'm saying? Right there. So I'm going to take that and I'm not going to cut it straight across because it's going to create a hard line. So I'm going to point cut it, just to keep it soft. And just get rid of that corner. 
Now, how do we know? Now, this is what I want you to see as well. Do you see this area here? That is the area that travels above the ear. So you have, you could end up with a slight corner there. Just clean it up. And that's along the perimeter eye. What is this area here? The area at the nape, where the nape, oh, this area. That's what that is. See, it's this area right here. That's because of the nape. The other one was right at this area. Whenever you're holding it at 90 degree, your perimeter line is going to show up. So there's your whys on that. I've noticed when people do, when they try to do the V-cut, you know, you hold it straight out and then everything comes down and we always end up with like a slight corner. It's this right here because we've taken it, held it all at one, and then you, you might have a little bit because of the area uh, above the ear as well. But those are your, those are your, what we call irregular lines. So I'm just going to take this and point cut it, keep it soft. And see that's, just keep it soft, clean it up, but it's going to give you your uniform layer. Okay, there's that line right there. We want to keep it soft. I don't want to take off any more than I need to. And I'm traveling down because I'm going down along the head form. And this. Now how do we know for sure, again, that we did it right? Let's see if our question mark is there. Come on, don't hit me in the face. Look at our question mark. See it? You see the question mark? That's the head form right there. And it's all the same length. This is rounded just like the head form. I got a corner right there, see it? So once, and see this is a lot cleaner, so I got a little bit of a, well you know what, I forgot. Yeah, this side I cut uh, front to back, so it's going to do that. This side I cut side to side, so, um, or the, uh, the other way around, I don't remember. But anyways, there's your why on that. So, but you can see that it's all there. It's rounded just like the head form. So that lets you know that you've done a uniform layer. All right, it's shaped like the head form at a 90 degree without doing this. Taking a small section, you've established your guide, you take it off, take this, and then take a small section, you've established your guide, the mistake that's made on this, what do we do? We bring it up. And then we wonder why this is off. But if you do it in this form, you'll get it every time it's a uniform layer haircut. What you decide from here is do I want bangs? And remember I said that we would use the vertex, I mean the apex, and pie shape it, pie shape it to the parietal line. And you can see that that's a triangle, right? Do you see that triangle? All right, I'm gonna bring it out. And I'm gonna cut it, if I cut it horizontally, I'm gonna have Dora bangs. But if I cut it vertically, it cups around the face real nice. And it's light and it's slightly layered. Do we have a corner? Yes. So then you would just take a smaller triangle and point cut into it. And it softened it. You see that? This kind of softens it, makes it nice. So if you want bangs, and then if she says, well, I'd like a little bit more of a bang, then almost a rectangle, but not quite. But you wanna just take a much thinner bang. You don't need to go to the apex for that. Much thinner bang. And remember, this area here is rounded. So that helps you. Now, if they're pretty straight right there, you wanna triangle it. Because this is pretty much, this is slightly rectangular. So let's say that she wants bangs and um, she just doesn't want a lot, but she just wants a nice soft little bang right there. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna bring it up. The thing that you do, you're gonna cut it vertically, but you wanna measure where you're at. Now remember when they style, it's gonna pop up. So if she wants it to land at the, at the bridge of the nose, take it up to the mid nose instead. 
So not too far up because it's going to pop up. There. Now she's got even more slight layering. Now let's say she doesn't like this going in her face. The comb of your texture shear is going to direct that back. I'm going to pick it up. The comb of my texture shear is faced backwards towards the crown. Oh, these shears don't cut very well. I need a better shear. There we go. We got it. Look at that just lay back by itself doing that. And let me hold it real tight. And usually, I, I, the only reason I'm doing it horizontally, but normally I recommend that you go with this angle and this angle so that it can't be seen. Look at them stay back now. You see what I'm saying? You can direct the hair back. Uh, it's not going to let me do it. These shears are not my best. Uh, I just grabbed some shears to do this with. I had a feeling about this. Okay, but look at the way they stay back. They're not falling forward anymore. You see what I'm saying? See how this side is still falling forward? Look. Try and get it to go back and it still comes back forward. This stays back. Same thing on the sides. If you want it to go back, your texture shear, but always at a slight angle. And be careful, uh, with fine hair, you don't want to you don't want to do it more than once. Once is enough, but do it at an angle because every one of those hairs has now been directed to go back. These won't. You see how that comes back forward? And these just kind of stay back. So those are little clues for you. Those are little helpful hints. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you didn't mind the review, but you gotta know where you're at on the head form. You gotta know every part of it. Uh, if you know exactly where the apex and the parietal line is at, and you cut it at a 180, which is uh, like this far away from the head if you want, that's called a flat top. Exact same thing. The shortest hair is at the apex. The longer hair, if you measure, is at the parietal line. All right, that's a flat top. So, it, so many cuts are the same and so many cuts are slightly different. Know where your nape is line is at. And uh, later on what I wanna do is I wanna uh, do some more clipper work to show you how to hold your clipper. Uh, certain basic things about the clipper to, to you know, create the haircut that you want. Why would we do it at the frontal and uh, bring everything up? Why would we do it at the center uh, apex? Why would we bring it back to the crown and cut it? So I've got my three, three mannequin stand here and what I'm gonna do later on, and I love this thing, is I'll have each one of those cuts done on mannequins so that you can see the variable, see the difference. If I bring it just to the frontal fringe, create the V in the back, just at the apex, it's gonna create more like a 180. Uh, just at the center crown, bring everything to that, hold that up at a 90, and don't go below the parietal line on any one of these. And let's just see what happens. So, and for those of you that are in school, don't you think it'd be better if your teacher came up and said, in front of a client, they would have respect for you, a lot more respect if she said, now, when you do this cut, make sure that you subsection off at the lower nape, and you can take it at a 90 degree up to the parietal line. Uh, be careful about the lower ridge, though, because, you know, we don't want to create too much of a corner. What is that client going to think? They're going to think you know your stuff. Professional language in our industry is lost. Let's bring it back. So I'm giving it to you guys. And again, I challenge you on the Tammy. I haven't heard any, I mean, I'm assuming there are some people doing it. It's not easy, I'll tell you right now. It's not easy, you have to know your color. Uh, you have to know what it does. So hopefully when that color dictionary comes out, uh, you guys will, <coughs> will uh, be interested in that. Take care, be blessed, and I'll see you again.